so we will learn about unions so unions are much very similar to structures and that's why so we will study about union and it's very similar to structure in how we declare it but there is just a small difference so the keyword used is union itself and let's see so if we write union item and int m float x care c and then so this is the union item and if i define item so union item i1 so when i define this and similarly if we had parallelly let's say we had a structure also so let's say we define struct s item and we had int m float x and care c and we defined struct s item s1 so now let's see what will be the difference let's assume so that item int is of 2 bytes float is 4 bytes and care is 1 byte so what will be the memory structure of a union so in terms of we know about structures so it will be kind of 2 bytes will be there so if it is 100 so 101 so these 2 bytes will be for int m then 4 bytes so 102 till 105 will be for float x and then one byte which is 106 for care c so total of seven bytes were required but let's see that for the structure for the union now so for the union so what it does is that it union just represents one of the items amongst all the three or among all the set that is given in the union so the highest so this is 2 byte integer this is 4 byte and this is 1 byte so now so it allocates the maximum of the memory so it's 110 111 112 113 so it allocates the maximum memory that is required by one of the elements because it only has to represent one element among all of them so now what happens is that if i have to write so if i write i1 dot m is equal to 12 so it means in this something like 12 will be written but at the same time if i write i1 dot x is equal to 15.432 and then i do a print f percentage d and then i1 dot m so in that case now the coder or the programmer has to understand that whatever the last value you have written you have the union is storing that and now you cannot access i1 dot m and expect to get an answer 12 so it's important to store and the correct value whatever we are trying to do so this is about structures and the representation is very much similar to union except that the maximum memory that is allowed is the maximum among all the elements 
memory size and so if we do kind of size of i1 so it will be 4 and if you do size of s1 so it will be 7 and that's because the maximum among them is 4 and here it will be the summation so 2 plus 4 plus 1 is equal to 7 so this is the thing we have to remember about union so the next thing that we are going to study is just the last is the bit field so what are bit fields now again if we have a structure so it basically saves memory for us so if we have structure tag names so integer we know that it has 2 bytes or 16 bits but what happens if we are representing a number that is maximum value is 32 and minimum is 0 so it's kind of the maximum is so let's say I want to represent a number which is ranges from 31 and another number n which is from 0 to 7 and the third number is p which is from 0 to 15 so one thing is that okay I don't care about the memory so what I can write is struct so collection and then I can do int n1 int n2 int n3 so now space wise this is now 2 byte 2 byte 2 byte so it's 6 bytes which is huge but what bit fields does is if I write struct collection 1 and int so here I write because I know it's a positive number only we can use bit field so I write on sign int m and then I give it that okay I will be just using 5 bits then I write unsigned int n and I'm using just 3 bits for it and unsigned int p for which I'm using 4 bits so this way what happens is that I'm now using only 5 plus 4 plus 3 so 12 bits I'm using and I'm saving lot of space so in fact the computer memory is in bytes so it will be using 2 bytes. Mm.